welcome to Inside of New England's Therapeutic Talk. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Hello, everyone. I have a very, very, very special guest today. His name is Daniel Danielson. He is a very, very, very talented uh, person and a beautiful person inside and out. He is an actor, a writer, and just a really talented um, creator, I believe. And um, he has been in uh, the show Blue Bloods. He was actually a uh, uh, extra in Annie, which I think is really impressive too. <laughs> um, he created a web series called Mr. and Mrs. Jackson, and this is a photo from that, but I believe his biggest accomplishment ever is uh, creating the movie Black Privilege, White Power. Um, and this movie is an amazing film. Um, him and his beautiful wife um, have a clothing line as well. Um, she is a model and they have clothing line. I got to see uh, one of their fashion shows uh, and it is amazing. Um, I'm just in love with uh, one of the outfits in particular. <laughs> and I just hope that everybody enjoys watching this um, and enjoys hearing about some of the work that he's done. He's a very talented person and I hope everybody enjoys. Hi, I'm Daniel Danielson. Hello, I'm so excited to have you. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so I don't know if do you, would you like to share like some of your story, um, how you broke into the business? Yeah, sure, I, you're right. I, I literally <laughs> broke in. <laughs> I um, So when I, I moved here from uh, Connecticut, uh, I was going to be an iron worker, had got accepted into the iron workers union. It was a long process, it was like a, two year process to get accepted into the union and we still hadn't started working. Um, this was 2013. And um, so, yeah, so the second day of orientation, I got fired. I was stuck on the FDR traffic stop. Like it wasn't moving at all, stop. You could turn the car off and just sit there. So um, I ended up being like two hours late for the orientation and they were like, no, it's not gonna work. And so I got fired and um, that was rough because I had just moved there with my son. He was about 16 or 17, I think at the time. And um, so, yeah. So then a friend of mine was like, well, you can go and do extra work on TV shows, Law and Order and all that stuff. And they pay you and feed you and stuff. So I was like, okay. And I went and did it. Uh, my first job was Annie, the movie Annie, where like I saw Jamie Foxx and I was just like, wow, this is great, you know? And, um, and I just kept pursuing it. Uh, I did Focus with Will Smith. Um, I met him that night. I did, uh, I did a bunch of stuff. It's, I ended up meeting my wife. So I was, I got called in after about a year, I got called in to do uh, the TV show Blue Bloods with Tom Selleck. Mm -hmm. And when they called me, they explained to me that they were gonna fit me to a personal uniform and that whenever he works, I would be one of the officers that walks, you know, up and down the hallway when and whenever he's there. He his office in the show is in um is he's the commissioner. So in the commissioner's office, you know, you'll see us walking by with paperwork or whatever. So and we, you know, we do it all day and get paid and go home and come back. I I would do it three or four times a week, you know. So they would call me and say, Listen, we need you Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. And I was like, Yeah, great, you know. And um, so that was awesome. It, um, I did it for three years, three seasons straight. So th from there, I started to learn of you know the inside track of the industry. People would there would teach me what you know what I would need to know about the industry. But I also met my wife in the last season. I met my wife um, one day where we were just there. She's a model and. You know, she was just doing background. It's one of those jobs here in New York. New York has a bunch of jobs that you can just sort of show up and do for like a hustle for the day. You know, back when we, I was younger, they, we would come and some of my friends would be messengers. So you could just go to these places and say, hey, look, I want to be a messenger. And they let you be a messenger for the day. So being an extra in a TV show is one of those kinds of New York jobs. You can just show up. They don't, you don't have to have any sort of qualification you just need a look. And if you look, then they throw you in the movie or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, so then I got like upgraded to being a regular recurring um, officer in, in Blue Bloods. And so that, that's how it went. It was good. 
Exciting. <laughs> so now um, your movie that you have now, your new yeah. movie. Um, do you want to share a little bit about that? I did get to see the premiere and I think it's a beautiful, you're so talented and um, I think it's a beautiful film. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. So um, the film is called Black Privilege, White Power. Um, it's based on um, the, in, a, in the civil rights era, uh, my aunt Posey Lombard, um, who I was adopted. So I grew up in Connecticut and my whole family is white. My parents are white, my brother and sister. I have one of my younger sisters still lives in Connecticut in the house we grew up in and she's African-American. And um, so my mother's sister, they um, came from a wealthy family and while in college, my aunt Posey um, volunteered to join the students uh, students committee in in the South, in Mississippi, during Jim Crow. So, you know, her story is amazing. The more I learned it, because at first, when I first heard about her about 10 to 12 years ago, she passed away when I was about 15. She died in a car accident. But yeah. when I first heard about her, I, I heard that she marched with Dr. King in Selma. So I was like, wow, that's amazing, man. You know, like, I didn't know somebody in my family was, you know, and especially with the, you know, the dynamics of me being African American and her being white, it was just like, wow, that's amazing. But when I started to do the research on her, because research is something that I love to do anyway, I've always just, as a kid, I love to like, look up stuff and find things out. So when I started researching her, it was very deep, because first of all, when I asked my uncle, I said, did she march in Selma? And he, you know, his, he doesn't, his memory is not good. So he was like, um, I think she was locked up. So I was like, she was locked up. And then I went and found her mugshot wow. uh, for when she was locked up, which was on March 18th, 1965, in her mugshot. And so doing the research in Selma, uh, the research of Selma, the march from Selma to Montgomery started on the 18th in Selma and ends up in Montgomery at the capital of Alabama in, in um, on the 25th. So March 18th to March 25th from Selma to Montgomery. But her mugshot is March 18th in Montgomery. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. How does she get arrested in Montgomery before the, mar before the march starts at the place where the march ends. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm trying to figure it out. And so that's where the mission started. That's how right in the movie got started. Because what it is, it's a real whole backstory on what took place at that time. Really interesting that there's not a lot of media coverage of what was going on when she got arrested, but there is some. The reason why there's not a lot is because all of the media are in Selma with Dr. King because they're going to make the march and try to come over the bridge. So mm -hmm. that's where all of the photographers and all the media is. But as I dug deeper, you start to see there's about 30,000 people already in Montgomery as a beachfront. They're waiting for they they're waiting for the marchers to come and then they're going to come to the to the rally, but they're also what their mission was they were basically trying to get arrested. And that's what's really deep, the sacrifice that they made. They were right. trying to get arrested because the law enforcement was arresting black people for like no reason. But so what the young white kids were doing, it was basically spring break, March 18th is like spring break. Cause one of the guys I interviewed, they're like 80 years old now. But the oh. one guy said, well, cause I talked to him and I thought he was gonna talk to me about like how much he was into civil rights. And he said, well, it was spring break and the guys were like, hey, we should go to Alabama. So we just went to Alabama. But when he gets there, Stokely Carmichael, John Lewis, when they get to Atlanta, it's because they wanted to go to Selma, Stokely Carmichael told them, no, go to Montgomery and fill the jails in Montgomery. And once they started filling the jails in Montgomery, the media started paying attention that you got young white kids from Smith College, from Holyoke, Amsterdam, from Trinity, from all over in the North in jail in, in Montgomery. And that brought to the attention of um, Robert Kennedy, and then to um, President Johnson. So it's really interesting because we always think about the march, the Selma march is what influenced President Johnson for the voters' rights bill. 
but there's <laughs> more to it. There were a bunch of white kids that were in jail, in prison, in like the parchment prison farms from the north, from rich families, and they were refusing to get out. They wow. said they're not, we're not getting out until you, they acknowledge what's going on to these black people down here. So that's that's the black privilege, white power. Wow, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how can people watch the film? Like when will it be? Well, you can't really watch the film because what you saw was a private screening for investors because the film that I made uh, out of my pocket is only a short version of the full length film, what we use for people, investors to come along and help us to make the full length film. So so that's the process. That we're, That's where we are now. So we did, I did submit the short version to Martha's Vineyard Film Festival, to Cannes, um, Tribeca Film Festival. So if it makes it into those film festivals, that's great. But right. the purpose of the film is actually to enhance investors' awareness to support us financially to make the full length film. Okay, well, hopefully, because it's, yeah. it's an important story to be told. Yeah. So I hope, <laughs> yeah. I hope that they will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure they will. We, you know, we've got yeah. a lot of people interested. We've got contact by some celebrities already who are interested. So we yeah. just need to, you know, do the footwork to to get to where we need to be. Hopefully this summer we'll shoot it and we'll have it ready, you know, next year, 2022. Yeah, because the actors are really amazing too. They Yeah, yeah. We have some really good actors. Yeah. Some really talented people too. Yes. Right? Yeah. I was like surprised that we were able to get them. You yeah. Know? One the one girl is like a big uh, Broadway star, so mm -hmm. I was just surprised that she would come and do, work with us. And she was like, "I love it. I want to do more of this." So I was like, okay. <laughs> so. And then oh, and the song too. With At the, the end. Song. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. He's, yeah. So I met him while we were filming down in Mississippi. We were filming in this shanty town in Mississippi. And he was from like a couple of towns over and he came over and my friend was like, hey, you got to listen to this guy. He's good. And, you know, I have been in the music industry for a while, um, some years back. So I, I know good music when I hear it. And right. people come to me often with music and stuff and art. And I'm an artist, so I'll never say like, I'm not going to listen to you. But a lot of times people will come to me and their stuff isn't good, right. and especially when some people have the potential to be good, but you can tell they didn't put enough effort into it. So mm -hmm. I can tell right away when you play your music or you sing a song or you act or whatever that you do, you got a painting and you show it to me, I can tell right away if it's good or if it's not, you know? And mm -hmm. so I was really busy and my friend was like, hey, you got to listen to this guy. And I'm like, all right, I give him like 30 seconds. So I was in the middle of doing a whole bunch of stuff. And when I went over there and I heard what it was, I don't even remember what it was, but it only took me about five seconds. I said, listen, give them your number and I'll call you later because yeah. his stuff was good. And we've been yeah. interacting. Yeah. And then, you know, I helped him sort of put that song together. He, he did the, he did the main part. I would like, I was saying, Hey, switch this here and, and do that there, you know, but he's really good. He's got a bunch of songs and now I'm, I'm helping him work on some of the songs that he has now. Yeah. Yeah, his name is College Boy. That's his name. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think it goes really, really nice with the film, too, the song. Thank you. It's, yeah, <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> and to what we're going through today, because yeah. the whole, and I loved how you put that together at the end, too. Yeah. Where it Thank shows um, then and now. Yeah. It's not really too, too different. <laughs> yeah. It's almost, it's oh, almost it exactly the same. the same. Yeah. And all these years later, you know, that we're still doing this here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I think, and overall, the 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 plan and was we really want to get the younger people more aware of how much power they actually have and how much we need them. So we need them to understand, and then we need them to sort of step up and step into this role because everybody has to play a part um, when it comes to social justice you know like dr king said that in the letter letters from the birmingham jail that a uh, threat to injustice 
anywhere, uh, uh, an injustice everywhere, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Right. You know, so anytime somebody is doing something wrong, if we're not saying anything, it, it's going to affect all of us. Right. You know? So, yeah. so we're just trying to get people to be aware. And if you can step up, step up. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like what you're doing. So you know? important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do, you do the best you can. That's what you right. do. You do the best you can. Like I should, I'm not going to do what you're doing, and you're not going to do what the next person is doing. But we're right. all going to do what we can do, you know. And right. so who who knows what that is? But you just do whatever you can. Do whatever you can, and then help support each other with yes. whatever each other right. are doing. <laughs> now um, it's just is it, today's a busy day. Again, my wife was supposed to be here, so she's downtown modeling uh, with my with my stepdaughter and you know that's what they do at this time of year anytime always around fashion week fashion week was like last yeah. week but there's always a buzz with the modeling industry and then we're going to move into spring we're going to move into the spring clothing line uh, we have a clothing line so you know we've got a bunch of stuff in the back room so we got to start distributing it and doing photo shoots and you know, hiring models and stuff like that. So it's fun. We're, we're right in the heart of it. So it's like getting models and influencers, they're, they're right here. So we're having fun doing yeah. that. Yeah. So we're launching again our newspaper print. That's, that's the um, signature line that we're launching. Uh, we got the duster coat, the mini dress, the pencil skirt, and the leggings. So that's fun. So we're, we're excited to, to, you know, get that out there for the spring and the summer for the ladies. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the jacket dress. So is that, what do you, what, what do you guys call that? Uh, that's a duster, the full length Oh, that's duster. a duster, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can wear it, yeah. So it has these hooks. So you can wear it sort of as a full length dress that's or you can wear it like almost as a full blazer or something like that, like, you know, okay. a duster. So yeah. either way. I, yeah. I kind of envision it like because it's it's supposed to be summer stuff, but it's long sleeve and it's kind of heavy. So mm -hmm. it's for like you ever know like when in the summer when you're working in the office and it's freezing, like it's yeah. 90 degrees outside, yeah. but it's freezing in the office. Yeah. So there you go. That's perfect for, for that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, we're we're everybody loves that one. That one sold out right away last year. It oh, sold okay. out. Yeah. yeah. So now we're trying to reproduce that for for the spring summer coming up. But oh. um, the next thing now is uh really just raising funds to to shoot the film, and also you know I'm doing you know I auditioned earlier for uh um the new the second season of the Wu Tang, um television show. So, you know, just regular auditions. I did, I shot um, Michael Che from SNL. He has a new show. So I, I, I got a part on that. Um, so yeah, just uh, doing more shows, more work, more voiceovers. So, you know, excited. Yep. Staying busy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. When you're a creator, you're always busy. <laughs> yeah. We try to do, we try to do, you know, three or four things at a time that yeah. way if you're only so when you like for my actor friends if you're only doing one thing and it's and it goes dry then you're right. just sitting there doing nothing that's how we right. started making exactly. content like we we had a web series called mr and mrs jackson you know when we were done with that we started the clothing line finished the clothing line started a new movie you know so and in the meanwhile we're still doing acting and modeling and whatever else that comes up, you know, when the pandemic yeah. hit, we were multitasking. Right. Yeah. You didn't so we're stop. Ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I feel like my brain's like running a million miles an hour sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you for thank you for having for me. Coming. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you reaching out. We'll we'll do it again and and get Josephine yeah. on here. I'm sure she would she would like yes. to get involved. Yeah, to talk about the fashion and her work. Yes, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you.
I see 